Over the years, I've seen my fair share of pretty unusual watches. In fact, I'm putting one on right now. But the one we're gonna look at today is easily one of the more unusual ones I've ever seen. Just check it out. This is the Revelot R10 Admiral GMT, which we'll be launching in pre-order early next month. It's a vibrant, unusual, fun, and pretty funky GMT, as well as one that may look a little confusing when you first see it. At least until you realize that the inspiration behind this is the US Navy's newer literal combat ships, and I'm guessing specifically the Independence class, because those ships have a pretty unusual design in themselves. And once you see that, once you make the naval connection, then the design elements here on the R10 start to make some sense. It's still fun, still funky, but it's a little less random now. And the surprising thing is, as weird as this thing looks, it's pretty easy to read. But before we get to all that, there are a couple things I need to let you know. Now, first off, this is a prototype that was given to the channel. And as such, your standard prototype warning applies. Basically, that there may be some changes to the final production unit that I have no idea about right now. And second, as I said, this one was given to the channel, so I don't have to send it back. And as such, the promotional tag is up. With regard to sizing, I'm gonna wind up calling this a 41 and a half. But because of the key shape and because of this graphic on their website, I think it gets a little bit confusing. So let's dive into this in more detail. The 43 and a half millimeter that they show here is going from those two far edges. So it's like from the one and a half hour point to the seven and a half hour point, which is not something I typically measure. But if you're going from the 12 to the six, it's more like 40 and a half. Or if you go from the nine to the three, then it's about 41 and a half. So if I got to label this as something, I'm going to say it's a chunky 41 and a half. And it's one with a lug to lug of 49 and a total thickness around 13.5. And in that way, it's pretty standard for a mid-sized diver these days. And on the wrist, I think because of its chunky size, I'd say it wears more like a 42, maybe 42 and a half, somewhere in between all that. But it is comfortable and it is fairly balanced on its bracelet, albeit with a pretty hefty solid feel at around 170 grams, give or take a link or two. And due to the design, I think it looks really thick, but at 13.5, it's not overly thick, at least not for a diver or a GMT with a Seiko NH34 movement. Also, despite that 49 millimeter lug to lug, it wears more like a 48 on its bracelet. And that's because the bracelet doesn't have any fitted end links. It's just this flat bar with a quick release. And because of that, there is some good and bad here. Now the good is that it immediately starts to curve down, and because of that it wears better on the wrist. That, and since the lugs aren't very long, I think it looks better in aftermarket straps. Whereas the bad is simply that it doesn't look as cohesive as it could have with fitted end links, which is part of the whole reason you buy a bracelet with the watch. Other than that, the bracelet is actually great. It's this Royal Oak style bracelet that tapers from 22 to 20 at the milled clasp. And that clasp does have a pretty good on the fly quick adjustment system. So not only does it look good, but more importantly, it's really comfortable. Rounding out the specs, you also have a 20 millimeter lug width, 200 meters of water resistance with a signed screw down crown, a flat sapphire crystal with AR, a ton of loom here, and it's all powered by a Seiko NH34 Collars GMT movement. As you can see here, the case is very geometric, with all these multiple platforms coming together and forming a very angular cushion case. I think the best way to look at it is that it's kind of a mini samurai, or maybe mini Zello's hammerhead. It's a case that has a distinct presence, but not overly so. It's one that's more aggressive and more modern in design. The case has an entirely brushed finish, which is kind of what you'd expect on a tool watch that was inspired by a military vessel. Pseudo mill spec here. And surprisingly, everything here, even despite all of those angles, is smooth to the touch. The only exception to that is the bracelet, and there I felt its edges were a tad sharp. Not horribly so, but definitely could be improved upon. 
On the rear has a closed case back, complete with all the particulars, and this whirlpool design similar to the dial. Whereas back to the front and over at the lower right, you have a sign screw down crown, which is really tucked up into those angular edges. And if it wasn't for the excellent coin edge knurling on it, it'd be pretty hard to get out. But as it is, I never had a problem. And that knurling is something it also shares with the bezel. I'll talk about the insert in a second, but the bezel here itself, the action itself is perfect. It's easy to get a hold of, it's easy to turn, and a fantastic clicky action. For me, this is how a bezel should be done. As for the insert, it's ceramic with a very interesting design, and one that will vary depending on the colorway. As usual, Revlon has a ton of different colorways coming, and there's ones that range from normalish to completely vibrant, all the way to meteorite, with this one in particular being the molten steel colorway. But it's here with this faded orange on the insert that kind of throws me a bit, only because it doesn't seem to match anything else on the dial. I mean, there's plenty of orange here, but nothing that's faded. And I honestly find it a tad distracting. Although, to be fair here, typically on a timing bezel, the last 15 minutes is supposed to be more eye-catching, more standout-ish, and that it is. Plus, this faded orange is loomed, and it looks awesome when the lights go out. So, as a loom nut, I think I'd give it a pass, but I'm still not 100% sold on it. Onto the dial, and here is where things get interesting slash weird fast. Regardless of the colorway, they all start off with a sunburst whirlpool dial, which sits just below this white disc crosshair indice radar thing on the outer edge. But the whirlpool effect itself is pretty cool, although ironically it's probably the last place you want to wind up with your ship, because that's exactly what the hands resemble, one of those vessels. At first glance they may seem like bullets, but they are one of those ships. And they're really eye-catching in black against the orange backdrop, easily standing out with a ton of contrast. And the same can be sort of said about the GMT hand. The GMT hand is pretty thin, and maybe too thin here. Personally, I prefer it to be a little wider, and I'd say the same for the stick second hand. But the orange arrowhead on the GMT does come across easily against the white of that whole crosshair thing. So it's thin, but it is still pretty usable. And it's at that outer edge where it winds up pointing directly at a raised chapter ring containing 24-hour indicators. And if you haven't realized it yet, there's something a little different, maybe a little off about this whole design. And that's that this is a GMT diver that doesn't have a GMT bezel, where instead it has those 24-hour markers on the chapter ring. And by having them there, it does allow them to use a timing bezel. Kind of an unusual combination. And I think some, and especially the purists out there, are going to have an issue with this, just because it's not the proper way to do things. But then again, this dial isn't exactly a proper dial. And I think you could easily argue that a timing bezel is far more useful than tracking a third time zone. But for me, I think the issue really boils down to how easy it is to read that GMT hand, as the small indicators on that chapter ring are pretty hard to make out, and that's even before you have them at an angle, because that angle doesn't help. It looks good from a design perspective, but not necessarily the best functionality. So personally, I'd love to see a 24-hour bezel on here instead. Then, down at the 6, we have a cutout for the date with a black date wheel. And normally in a situation like this, I talk about how that black date wheel distracts and disrupts the overall flow, even if it does make it easier to read. But in this case, I think the black on the date wheel matches the black on the hands, as well as the black on the chapter ring. So while it may distract a little bit, it still works itself into that design. In a nutshell though, this is a very creative and interesting design. I doubt you've ever seen anything like it. With the R10 Admiral, you're not going to hear words like elegant or refined. Heck, you're probably not even going to hear the word sophisticated. But I think you'll definitely hear the words cool and awesome a lot. And while there are some things here that I think they could change to make it more functional, like the bezel insert, overall I think it is still pretty functional. At least the main hands are, where there there's a ton of contrast against the orange dial. 
oftentimes with the more stranger, more unusual designs. And this watch right here is a pretty good example of that. Where it seems like the designer is so focused on the theming or being different that it loses a lot of functionality. And sometimes they just seem straight up alien. Where here with the Admiral, it's odd. There's no getting around that. But it still feels very familiar at the same time. There's no learning curve required here. And I have to say that everything here seems pretty well made for the price. It may have a quirky design, but it is a solid tool watch in its own right. And from that perspective, I think it could go toe to toe with any samurai or turtle out there. But moving on, let's talk Loom. And Loom here is great. From a design standpoint, it is awesome. As they took full advantage of it to create something very interesting making it look like you're staring at a radar screen when the lights go out. It's very creative, very original, and pretty captivating when you first see it. When it comes to longevity, it's also pretty good. Just outlasting a Seiko diver. The second hand fades out a bit sooner than I'd like, but the rest of the components stay in it, keeping that cool and completely quirky look going. As for the movement, Revelot went with the new Seiko NH34 Collars GMT movement, which is popping up everywhere. It seems to be a great movement. It's new, it's relatively affordable, seems to be reliable, and everyone seems to want to use it. So great choice here. You shouldn't have anything to worry about. But I think by the end of this year, we're going to see so many of these things, you're going to be sick about hearing about the NH34. But that's at the end of the year. As for right now with this video, they're still interesting. Now, as for the price, from what I know, there's going to be an early bird pricing starting at 249 And that's one with the silicon strap. If you want the bracelet, it's 295 After that, I have no idea what the prices are going to be. But the early bird pricing is pretty great. It's a solid, well-made GMT with sapphire, ceramic, quick adjust bracelet for just under 300 bucks, And that's pretty hard to beat let alone one with a pretty original design. In fact, I'd say this is my second favorite design with the NH34 movement, with my first being the RZ Ascentis. Still love that one. I think that is practically the perfect travel watch. Whereas this, the R10 Admiral, is so original and so fun, you can't help but like it. Or at least I can't. There's nothing here that's really refined. It's definitely not one all the hot horologists are going to be drooling over. But when it comes down to it, this is a solid tool watch with a really fun and funky design. Although I'm sure some of you are going to be looking at this and thinking that it's just too strange. That if you're going to spend money on a watch, you should stick to something that's more versatile. Something with a classic and timeless design. And if you're talking about someone who's new, or someone about to buy their first diver, or someone about to buy something that's going to be their daily driver, then at that point, I 100% agree with you. No question on that. But something like this is for someone who already has all those bases covered, who already has a number of timeless and classic pieces, and who's now looking for something a little different, a little fun. Because I think with every watch collection, at some point there's room for something a little whimsical, something a little fun. And at this price, this is a pretty good one to do it with. But what do you think about the Revlot R10 Admiral? As well as making room for the occasional fun and funky watch, something that doesn't quite fit into that hot horology mold. Let me know down below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, you guys know what to do down below. Just like, comment, subscribe, hit some button really helps. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.